Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all my new and old friends. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about some spiritual alchemy. I'm Cindy Carter, an intuitive, an artist, an energy healer, and a spirit consultant. This series of alchemy podcasts that I put out on Sundays are my gift to you. I'm bringing new ideas so that you can learn to transmute the energy within you and around you with compassion. So I'm helping you remember your divine nature. The last podcast, we talked about truth uh, rewired, not unwired, truth rewired. We talked about rewiring what you believe and what you know as your truth. When you come to a wholeness that can be then rewired. You see, when you see your wholeness for the truth that it is, without giving it meaning and judgment, we can do the rewiring. So this is for yourself to see yourself in a fuller view of what needs to be reframed within you. So as an alchemist, it's always about the choice to displace what's no longer viable to your life. It is your choice. You are the director of this body. I keep going back to the idea of choice in every podcast because it is the main catalyst. This is the spiritual right of sovereignty. This is a universal law that we do have choice, even though we have lived on an earth ship without choice. We now have choice. So we are returning to our wholeness the choice to get out of our mind, the choice to rework what you believe and know of yourself. You might want to revisit that last podcast called Truth Rewired. Today, we're going to talk about this daunting energy known as doubt. Oh my, the doubt stream, the frequency of doubt. I've been dealing with a lot of that, not myself, but with my clients lately. I'm sure they won't mind me speaking about some of our conversations anonymously, of course. It does help others to hear uh, how people um, come to their ideas and how they reframe them. Without judgment, of course. But doubt is really just blatant untrust. It's just blatant untrust. Yes, you've kind of ascribed to doubt when you do not trust. But we need to look a little bit deeper at this blatant energy that can run rampant in your mind and your energy field. You know the signs of it. Mental body disruptions, overthinking, negative thoughts. These things lead you to self-ridicule because of the doubt. You're not worthy. You're not accomplished You didn't attain, you know, all these false ideas. Doubt is a mental body activation. Like, you know, it does activate the mental body electrically and very uncomfortably, of course, where the mind remains basically suspended between two or more contradictions, unable to properly move towards any of them. We live in comparison constantly, comparing one thing with another. My experience was not this, so how could I even jump to that? We're not open. We're like in suspended animation, stall out. Doubt on an emotional level is indecision between belief and truth. Yeah, but do you believe? And is this belief a truth? Oh my God, whose truth? And is it a truth that's denied or willing by my soul? Or is this a truth that everyone's speaking? This is what the mental gymnastics do. It may involve a lot of uncertainty, a lot of distrust, this stall out, this doubt in the emotional level. It's a lack of conviction, conviction really, of certain facts or decisions. Doubt can really result when we delay or reject very relevant actions 
out of concern for mistakes or missed opportunities. We don't do things because we might do it wrong. That is such an old story. I did it last time like this and it turned out like shit, so why would I do that again? Why would I even attempt it again? Why would I even look at it again? Because you're not the same person now, for one thing. The timeline has changed for another. And you're operating through the essence of a false belief called doubt. Maybe if you change that, we could move into something else. This is trust. But delaying an action because you don't, because you doubt that you can do better is really not a reason. Because failures make your successes. I didn't learn that the easy way. <laughs> doubt does feel like a choke chain to me, like a choke chain on a dog, you know, those really tight metal rings around your neck. If you move too far forward, it'll grab you and hurt you. These inhumane things that they put on dogs that have never been trained, train the dog. Take the choke chain off. But who put it on? You did. Doubt is a choke chain of your own making. Even if it came from somewhere else, you have gotten yourself into this no movement. This doubt is based in your past experiences. Whether, you know, you're being relieved within your mind or your emotions or your subconscious traumas that bring doubt to the body and mind, whether you're relieving yourself of even that so you have a choke chain on so you don't have to go too far, it's not going to help you. It's not going to help unless you're open and willing to look at the doubt stream, how it plays out in your life and where it shows up in your non-movement in your delayed actions, in your, you know, stall out, in your couch time. How do you even approach doubt? (laughs) I mean, it does feel like a daunting thing to a lot of people because it is like a Tasmanian devil-like energy around a lot of people. When I talk to them, sometimes the conversations are like mental gymnastics. It's very obvious. It's like a ping-ponging its way through the rational and logical mind and then jumping back into the creative mind and then doubting that and jumping back into logic, but then basing it on what? They have nowhere to go because they can't go to neutral. They can't go to positive or negative. They don't know which one to take. So they sit on the fence. They're not even in, in neutral. They're in ping pong on the fence watching both. Hopefully, you know, You'll make your way into a more innate, more sacred truth within you, which is witnessing both sides, but not being overwhelmed by both sides. The ping-ponging has to stop. The mental gymnastics have to stop. The doubt needs to be calmed. And I know it's overwhelming for a lot of you right now. I mean, it's obvious the narrative here on earth is causing a lot of that. But what we do with it is our responsibility, right? That's the alchemy. My clients are included in this. Some that I've worked with for a very long time are still in complete doubt. They just keep reworking doubt in their mind. And I'm not talking about one client. I'm talking about several. So get yourself off the judgment hook, whoever you are. Some people have decided this is a very unstable world, and the only place to go right now is doubt. Well, that seems kind of normal in abnormal times. You can doubt stuff, or you can just be, like, unknowing. It's okay to be unknowing, but it's not okay to be doubtful with yourself. You know, if you're seeing deception and false truths being displayed, this is abnormal times, you know, at this heightened state where we're continually saying and feeling, I doubt this is true. I doubt what is being presented to me. I have so much doubt that I can't even be convinced otherwise. 
not by myself or not by, by another person or even my higher self right now because I am in doubt. I doubt everything on earth. I doubt humanity. I doubt the love of my own being. Well, here we go. You've gone way past uh, discernment. You know, like you totally forgot discernment. You forgot to bring it along with you. And now that just brought you into this doubt. You just bypassed discernment. Straight away into doubt where all you hear and all you see and all you are doing is judging your unworthiness of the reality that you're living. You're doubting a fact, doubting a truth, doubting a reality. Where are you going with it? Except in circles. That's where the energy goes. I see energy when people, people talk. I see energy when people think. I see it when they express just by walking. What they're doing is circling back, circling back, circling back. It's not really allowing too much freedom for the cell. So I see where it's very stifling to the body and mind. Doubt. But we could speak no doubt. We could deny doubt, the energy. We could deny it a place to flourish. We could deny doubt by not giving it the fuel. By using your conscious mind and focus and awareness in the moment when doubt is presenting itself to bring yourself out of doubt. Unstable worlds do become stable after the purging of darkness on this earth, and that's where we are. Our world is being defined by sacred truths, one by one by one. Trust this divine plan. Because doubt is based on us having to define at all costs what we're feeling. Defining what we're seeing and defining what we're experiencing. Giving it a label, giving it a definition, and then giving it a treatment source based on that definition. Well, who wrote that? Another human. How spiritual is that human? And does that human know your thousands of lives? And does that human know your soul progress? No. You do. The self. In your unawareness and your awareness, you do know that you are defining your feelings and defining your seeing to justify them, defining your experiences to justify how you feel. This is where we take full responsibility. I mean, we're defining all things. Our mental bodies like to wrap limited words and phrases to what we know. The English language is a limiting experience, when we know of our extrasensory perceptions, you know, these words and phrases can, new, can do no building of information that your innate or your soul has already got in place as a knowing, as a reality, as a sacred geometry that lives within you, in your Merkaba, in your cells, in your DNA. These extrasensory perceptions are so highly attuned to your higher self that we can often overlook them or not even have any access to them. It's like self-induced quarantine from seeing beyond the known, feeling beyond the known, beyond your definitions and defining and judgment. We got to bring some trust of our innate, of our ever presence, of our soul self to deny the doubt. Defining everything is, is exactly how we stay stuck in the fence of doubt and not being able to move forward. You know, if you want to stay in ridicule of your own judgment and own self, constantly, back and forth, back and forth, well then, define everything. You'll stay right there. You see, our minds and emotions like to say, okay, this is it. 
uh, I am this, uh, or fill in the blank, this is bad, this is good. But the sacred parts of your being have no concept of these words. It is what it is. It is a reality. And your understanding of this is your perception made up of your senses that you're using in a limited way. It's you that must make it what it is. You're the alchemist. You define and categorize your very existence into small framed up boxes so you can know your truth. Because people are telling you. Society tells you. This is part of a manipulation of humanity to categorize and make bad what is seen, what is felt, what is witnessed. To be, you know, totally uh, uneasy with everything you see. This is what's happening. I'm not uneasy with everything I see. I see it being played out as a soul progress. It's like a soul song of each person. This is their existence with, without compassion. This is what's being taught and has been taught for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Compassion left this earth ship, but it's coming back as sovereignty. Compassionate humanities are from long times ago, where all things are what they are, not good or bad, not judged, not given power, not fought against. This is where the duality was taken literally. No middle road. In this humanity, there would be no doubt. You know, if we were in compassion, there would be no doubt. In that humanity, there would be no boxing of the ingredients and categorization as good, bad, or evil. This is just true compassion, where there would be no separation of heart spaces. We would have boundaries for our heart. That is compassion but we don't separate what we witness. We would have compassionate understandings for the complete cycle of the soul and the soul's choices. The cycle to be witnessed, not manipulated or controlled. When we say, I'm a certain race, I'm a certain gender, gender or, or even all those insane offshoots of gender, that were created to lessen the power of the human, to divide and separate further. It's called transhumanism. We don't need that in the place of living. But if you want to live in complete doubt of who you are, go ahead and put yourself into a gender, put yourself into a race, put yourself into these creations by other humans. That's not who you are. You're a spirit in a body. You're a spiritual being. So, you know, because of this agenda on the earth ship to bring about a separation, the duality is playing hard. <laughs> I, I just heard playing hard in the paint. That's what, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> Did I just say that? I'm such a cool mom. <laughs> That's what I've heard. <laughs> oh. Or am I just, you know, having a certain philosophy or a belief system? So you got to look at that. Boy, we see this right now, you know, playing out in society, these T-shirt wearing affiliations of hate, of separation. No, I'm not talking about politics. (laughs) You aren't this hate. You are not this manipulated direction because it's all a misdirection anyway. It's part of the show. Away from your spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? This earthship, separation from you and everything from you and your spirit is a misdirection. There is an organic timeline based in the organic life forces of earth, Gaia. But this earthship is a misdirection away from what is truly happening. We are coming into cosmic awareness and we're speeding fast towards our own clarity as the narrative around us implodes upon itself. We can live in no doubt. 
not even knowing what the hell's going on around you, you can live in no doubt. Even during this volatile but soon to be beautiful time, you're a spirit essence having some fun or not so much fun here on the earth ship in your light and sound suit full of sacred ingredients that are activating with or without your participation, with or without your awareness. It's just operating. Do you want to be in the trance like everyone else? Your sound and light suit has this mushy brain part that likes to define and categorize based in trauma from the cellular body that's not based in love. So using words that other humans have invented, words to manipulate you away from the truth of your being, the truth you are, beauty that you are, the courage that you are, exhibit this love to yourself as alchemy. This affects your energy field, others' energy fields, and the earth's organic grid. But here we are, reinforced all around us, to categorize, to box it, to make logic the king, the motivator, the emotional stabilizer. Mm, Not so much. Logic is only one part of your makeup, a small part when you let your heart work. And when you bring this in too hard, too strict, and with no forgiveness to the witness of all your incarnations, you're manipulating the soul consciousness of yourself with logic based on other people's words, ideas, and concepts. Yikes. No wonder we get caught up in the Tasmanian devil energy of doubt. It's like fire runs through your body and your mind. The tender tissues of your heart space are being bombarded with rippling doubt waves. It affects your heart's frequency and it affects your entire energy field. Doubt is a powerful anchor, anchoring you to the darkest side of the duality. Anchoring you to one side of the tunnel where duality lives where dark and light are expressed, as it has to be, on the earth ship. We can stabilize the effects of all these ventures and these experiences when we go to these extreme edges of dark and extreme edges of light by, you know, speaking no doubt, believing no doubt. Your abilities, known and unknown, Outweigh your doubts. Known and unknown abilities outweigh your doubts. Ooh, trust. Goodness, there that is again. This is alchemy. This is science. The DNA hold excessive possibilities and high vibrational futures. Your abilities, unknown to you now, perhaps, are what drive the soul through all the incarnations the drive, the soul to expel the beliefs and get on with the job of life itself in this body, to do the alchemy of choice, to speak no doubt, to be no doubt. This doesn't put you on a limb. You could be saying, I choose to trust and have faith and display self-confidence. Having no doubt isn't you standing on a soapbox yelling out what you believe. Oh, hell no. To be no doubt is to walk a humble existence of like observing your life, observing the spirit that's having a life. And if you become the self, you know, if you are like Joe, then you're helping that process along or slowing that process down. The self known as Joe. Clarity can come when you help yourself. This is compassion. This is selfish action some people feel. I call it selfless. To have compassion for yourself first, you can assist so many. It's scientific. It's magnetic. Because the result is you assisting others just by being the compassion. Just by being the self-confident and being the knowing of yourself, 
not of other people's knowings. One thing I know is my no doubt is in my no doubt is that I know nothing. This is an ultimate teaching. It's a humble place to witness and observe with no judgment, no categories. I know nothing, but I know everything for myself. There's no box to place the idea in, to jumble it up with other people's ideas. I have my own idea. Don't give me yours right now. I don't need to see your soapbox. I don't need you to convince me of your truth. I don't need you to rework my truth into a better version for you. There's a humble essence of life witnessing the out-of-balance actions of others. Is that your truth? I hope not. So can you witness another person's out-of-balance ideas, thoughts, and complete doubts and allow them that? With no judgment? Just witness space held in compassionate boundaries for you overall brings about this rippling of peace from you that some people will just love and other people will be repulsed by. (laughs) I mean, happiness is not for everyone. And it's not your job to make it otherwise, unless they're willing and able to assist themselves or have asked your permission. Doubt plays a huge role in the stopping of energy, stopping of movement. Say, one person might say, I'm a 55-year-old woman and no one would ever hire me. You know, I'm old. And then the other person might say, I know there's a job out there for me that's perfect. And somebody out there is going to value my participation. Which one do you think got the job? Which one do you even kept, which one even kept looking for a job? That's alchemy. Which one had doubt? Rampant doubt slows and stops movement of your entire lifespan. And it could stop you for five years, ten years, or a whole life. Because you didn't activate a choice that you didn't even know you had. It's like the self is saying, oops, I've gone too far. I'm not in complete doubt of life, of me, of my jobs, of food, of people, of friends. I'm in complete doubt of everything. What's left? What's left is the best part that you've overlooked, this part that's unknown to you, that is there, the ever-presence. It's the most cherished part of you. It's the beloved It's the ever-presence of the highest nature of soul essence, of Christ consciousness. It's in you. It's within you. It's around you. If you choose not to doubt, if you choose not to speak the doubt. I mean, doubt can come from many sources, really too many to name here, and really what's the point of knowing the source unless you just want to learn to protect yourself against a source. And I don't offer protection for myself. I mean, hardly ever. I might protect my head from a flying rock, but nothing to protect when we are in our no-doubt place of not giving something importance, whether it's fourth-dimensional or third-dimensional. But really, it's about the responsibility of yourself. How much responsibility are you going to take for that thing that is is affecting you? You see, doubt as a stream can be from, you know, intergenerational influences, lifetimes of your family's uncertainty, maybe during war atrocities, uncertain where they're going to live or uncertain what they're going to eat. These codes encode your cells with trauma that live within you, just waiting for you to activate just a bit of a bit of doubt, just a little. Just one thought of doubt, and all of a sudden it's rolling within you. I'm not good enough. Self-loathing ideas, they blow up these codes to now work against your movement of life and your attainment of goodness. Or doubt can come in as a metallic frequency from off-planet sources. Or even from the collective consciousness of doubt. The streams of influence are many. Let's just choose to be responsible as the alchemist and work with the energy present. 
speak no doubt. Sometimes we need to zoom out like rise above, take the high road to realize the no doubt place. To see from a higher vantage point that we are now arriving fully in doubt. That it's time to become aware. Time to rework, rewire. When you're aware of doubtful actions and doubtful thoughts, this is the place to start doing the alchemy right then. This is the focus and attention I'm talking to. If you are focused on your spiritual process, you'll focus on the alchemy in the moment of adding the opposite in the moment. This is how we do it. There's a place where doubt does not live in your cellular body. It doesn't wreak havoc in your mind. It's you know, part of your sacred alchemy, God's source inside you, and it creates a catalyst for upliftment away from doubt. So wherever on the stream of that doubt you would like to insert the opposite, do it. Is it an opposite feeling of doubt? Is it an opposite sense of doubt? Is it an opposite thought of doubt? Is it an opposite smell of doubt? Is it an opposite touch of doubt? Bring all the senses in for upliftment. Because doubt is the kind of energy you don't have to rework for too long or reframe for too long. This is not a long process. You're you're just in the merry-go-round of it. And it's exhausting to witness the complete doubt working within people. When the mind gets fuzzy, the thoughts get disjointed, the phrases often self-deprecating, doubt is a tornado You know, and to calm the doubt, let's do the opposite. This is alchemy and science and sacred geometry, spiritual processing and proper alignment to reach a place of power beyond the doubt. This is the crucible. That's your working surface. All your ingredients are there. Let us work the mix, change the outcome to benevolence. I mean, right now. Not later, in the moment, not tomorrow. Stop the doubt. Stop speaking the doubt through your words. Stop throwing the doubt through your eyes. Stop bringing it through your sadness. Stop allowing it through your outbursts. Just stop already. What the heck? You forgot the beauty and the grandness of the great spirit that lives within you? You forgot the faith you need to move into the next carnation free of these traumas and influences. Or are you destined to do it all again? Repeat, repeat, repeat. Or are you willing to do the alchemy already? It's right here. It's plentiful. It's called love, self-love, peace, harmony. Freedom. It's so plentiful when you open the heart space in full trust to these things. No doubt that your heart will not be attacked. Because, hey, you're the responsible party now. With an intact aura and an intact golden layer. Able to transmute energies with one simple tool. Choice. You notice I didn't give you the top ten ways to rid yourself of doubt. Nope, not going to do that kind of thing. The ten ways all boil down to this. Choice. Can you finally choose to end the long time suffering that doubt has brought upon you? Can you decide that doubt can be less important? And you can integrate this spiritual body right into your everyday so perfectly without doubt? making a life for yourself that is truthful for you and uplifting no matter the choices of other people around you or in society by speaking no doubt. Uplift a life, your life. I mean, if you do need a tool, I do have one. It's an 11-day meditation. I don't have many tools, but this is one. (laughs) It's called the Template of Grace. I, I spent a long time working on this one. Because it was 10 years of understanding of cellular information and how the cell takes on information and how it takes it off. So I wondered, how would it take grace as information and allowance and activation? Well, over an 11-day period, you could witness and experience that. It's accelerating this stifling doubt out of you. 
Grace is the catalyst. Grace is a very swift energy that when you're using it with focus and ease and self-love, it can bring you right out of a doubtful life and into certainty and self-confidence. You can visit my website to download the template of grace, the 11 MP3s that are downloadable links, or you can just listen to them any day that you want once you have the link. It's just $33 US. Here's the kicker. If you can't afford it, contact me. I'll gift it to you. It takes no effort on my part to hit a couple buttons to send you some grace or the opportunity for grace. I do have an upcoming holographic healing certification class coming up in St. Louis the first week in November, but unfortunately it's full. No spaces left. I even opened it up to 16 spaces and it filled within just two or three days. No advertising, just people knowing people in St. Louis. It's becoming really clear that people all over are wanting to facilitate um, this kind of powerful healing modality. So if you're one of those people that has a lot of friends or colleagues or group members within your spiritual community, a lot of healers, or even if you're brand new to it, if you'd be interested, I do travel to teach this work. It's a two-day workshop. It's a lot of fun, and you get a lot out of it. It's high-level work, and you need to be prepared physically, emotionally, mentally. You need to be in some harmony before you get into my class. But contact me if you'd like for me to come to your area. So in closing, I hope that you open the boxes, take down the walls, and come out of this awful tornado of doubt. There is a calmer place to be. It's this sovereignty where you are self-confidence. You are loved. You are sacred. And you are Indeed, remembered by speaking no doubt. Many blessings.